to the Mad Witch channel. Thank you for popping by. Say hi, Moss. We're going to we're going to do a spread today using the Tarot of the Sweet Twilight. I didn't include this deck in my um, spooky decks for the season. I have tried to do this this video three times now, so um, hopefully I can I can perfect it. <laughs> the this deck is kind of a deck I use a lot more than just at the spooky season. I love the images. Um, the little white book particularly is rather special. Um, th the instructions are by Barbara Moore. Um, it is a low scarabeo. Um, I don't know if it's still in print. I didn't check. Um, I've edged mine in black. I've had it a long time. I'll probably have a walkthrough on my channel if I can find it. I will link it below although there'll be loads of other i have a book now it's in the processes of being morphed in to a specific um book my friend the lovely ellie sent me this oops hold on let me just ooh. look sent me this because of these modern fangled hoop things anyway so i am converting this into my tarot book for spreads uh questions and um anything like uh to do with tarot but not like putting readings in here so um at the moment it's morphing because it was a i've got to take these out and i've got some stuff to paint over the um the calendar so i can re reuse everything so anyway um what's lovely about this deck I mean, before i do the look at the cards let me just read a little bit of the very front of it to you because it is a special little deck and it does deserve a little bit of tlc time uh, tlc uh, well my tlc but time so we have Whispers of the twi twilight twist into corners of your soul, awakening long-forgotten feelings. Surreal images surprise your mind. Colours and curves delight your eyes. Bittersweet beauty tinged with sadness stirs your heart and you are moved beyond expectation. You are changed. You grow wiser. You find the world is more complicated, but no less beautiful. As you wander through the images of the Tarot of the Sweet Twilight, you will see that it is the most remarkable deck. Tarot decks are, in part, about balance. They are tools that help you find a connection between you and the universe. They are doors that you can walk through into different worlds. The sweet twilight is certainly all of this and more. Twilight is a place between light and dark, day and night. This deck recognises that tarot is about the place between places, a time outside of time. The images speak to the sad knowledge that while twilight is between day and night, it is moving toward night. They are also filled with sweet naivety. Whether you think that comes from the day before or the hope for the day to come is up to you. So we're going to do the spread that goes with this deck and it is called Your Guiding Star. And it's a, a quite a, a small, short little um, spread, but... I find using this deck, it really has a deep um, thought process going on. And it's it's not one, I think, that you can just go, oh, yeah, and move on. I think it's one that you could even journal with. So let's get started. The first card is you, who you are right now and where you are in your life. Card two is your dreams of who you would like to become and who you like where and where you would like to go. The rest describes aspects of self, what's working for you or what's getting in your way. 
So we have what you believe, what you know, what you feel, and what you think. Okay, let's get going. And there's our siren, just because every video I do has to have a siren in it for some reason. <laughs> okay, the first card. Who am I right now? I'm the Four of Pentacles. Ooh. Okay, so where am I in my life? <clears throat> Let me show you the cards a little bit closer up. Hopefully you're not getting any glare. <clears throat> I've turned the light off. Um, well, four is a stable number. And pentacles, earthy, they're to do with money, health, all that sort of materialistic side of life. <coughs> um, <clears throat> they don't necessarily represent being miserly for me at all. In fact, they, they never represent that for me. <clears throat> Um, I need to conserve money. <laughs> I'm not working. I need to conserve money. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I need some coffee and I think it's cold. Oh, hold on a sec. Let me grab my coffee. It will be cold, I know it will. Mm, stone cold. <laughs> Iced coffee. <laughs> right. Um, in the twilight zone, what does that really mean? Um, well, I think that sometimes we need to, if you if you hang on to to, to stuff materialistically, um, you it could become more consuming, um, and it could hold you back. But four is a stable number for me. But in the twilight zone, what does it really mean? So let's see what the pentacles in, in here have to say, because they are different. And that's what makes this little, little white book particularly special. <clears throat> Sitting tight and holding close is safe. Things aren't likely to get lost that way, nor will anyone ever take fi flight. Soaring high on the wings of anticipation, it's a trade-off. Uh yeah, that and this is what I mean. These are not straightforward. Um, I think at the moment my instinct instinct is I'm hunkered down. I'm not necessarily holding. Well, I suppose I am holding on tight. I'm holding on tightly to my books, my tarot. I will lose myself in a book. When I get particularly stressed or life on the outside just feels overwhelming and I'm not really, you know, I'm not really somebody who in the past has particularly, uh, you know, been like that. <clears throat> but lots of things change and nothing stays the same and I'm older now. So for me, if I uh, need to, I will I will lose myself in a book. Um, my days of adventures are over. <laughs> so I suppose I'm I'm more inclined now to want to hunker down with my books and and stuff. I don't know. I mean, monetary wise, I do need to be more reserved, um, and that is important. So I think I'm kind of in that space of conservation, conserving. OK, your dreams. I don't want to spend all the, too much time on it. I don't want it to be too long. So this is um, who you would like to become or who you, where you would like to go. We have the sun. Oh, OK. Um, well, I'm, I'm more of an autumnal girl myself, but OK. <laughs> so I guess I would like there to be some, uh, some good, you know, sun in our lives, some good things. It, it um, the sun brings warmth, doesn't it? It brings uh, that sense of comfort, and it is freezing cold in here at the moment because I refuse point blank to put the heating on. So uh, I have a hot water bottle. That's good enough for me. What that's got to do with this reading is irrelevant, guys. <laughs> so in the in the book it says the sun shines out 
of the eyes of every person brightly or muted, warming the world with personality as each helps shape the other. Uh, where would I like to go? My, where would I like, what, what would I like to become? I, I suppose I like to be a radiant soul. I, I, I like to always bring a smile and uh, make people feel comfortable and um, that's that's kind of who I am and I maybe lost a little bit of that I'm I'm much more wanting to hide away um, probably why I've gone back to YouTube videos is because I want to retreat from the world so this is kind of the the sort of balance for me is that the, I'm doing this because I'm, I'm not out in the real world but I don't want to be <clears throat> okay so what other aspects of myself do I need to look at what do I believe we have the Hierophant. He's an interesting soul, isn't he? This little cat there. It's all gone dark in here. I can't see what I'm looking at myself now. <laughs> if I, I'm just going to pull it towards me. It looks like a one of those um, uh, doll things that you hold. Looks in there in that box. What are they called? Those dummies, oh, I don't like them. They give me the heebie-jeebies. I'm not sure of those. We have fish flying over. Is he underwater? How interesting. And this is what I love about this deck. It it kind of flips everything upside down, sideways, and then a bit more somewhere else. Well, <clears throat> so what do I believe? Oh. I think at the moment I'm kind of... I'm not sure what I believe anymore about anything. I think every time I think I know something, it gets flipped on its head. Um, the more that I study my craft, the less I know. The more I know I don't know, that scares me because then I think, oh, how many books can I cram in? I, I'm not reading enough. I know I'm not reading enough. Um, I've kind of flipped to reading fantasy um what do i look for in the world to teach me well i don't look to the world to teach me anything it scares me a lot um and i become my little brian snail self and want to hide away so i i think that what i believe is that you we never stop studying we never stop learning we never stop growing um, and we look to nature to bring I, I look to nature to teach me um, I look away from the world and man it doesn't teach me anything I don't want to know um, could be completely off track with that but um, the hierophant is usually about higher learning in, if you, you know, if you've studied tarot, it it's also can be a way of either getting away from the constraints of religion or it's it's about, um, you know, finding that, that wisdom from a guru or something it can be. Or it can be just, you know, your higher self. Uh, it says here that the world is a fascinating place. The teacher introduces the young lady and her curious cat to the wonders around her approaching all life with love and respect so she's obviously not it's very difficult for me to see especially through the camera she's obviously not a mannequin she's um, a person but that's how she came up to me it looked like she was coming out of her box that's weird where's my mind <laughs> okay. what i know the Empress. Oh, well, this is my stalker card. Uh, always my stalker card. Um, and I have I feel very blessed that that is my stalker card compared to some people's stalkers. Um, she is a very creative motherly force. She brings things, you know, um, in, into creation. She's your creativity. Uh, I know that I have... 
um, a nurturing, creative side to me. I'm, you know, obviously my children are all grown now, um, but um, as a mother and a grandmother, and I'm also at a stage where I'm creating my own, um, my own world, I suppose, um, in what I, I do in my craft. Um, in the book it says, the Empress holds the world, even while she is a part of the world. She is life and the giver of life, and she represents all things that she has created. Uh, I know that we are, to a greater aspect, we are what we create as well. And I was having a conversation with my brother-in-law, and he said basically that everyone has the ability to be uh, to create their own um, life and and you know be a self-made person and it is true that we do all have we are all you know instrumental in our life and how we live it <clears throat> but I didn't agree with him completely I don't think that everybody is lucky enough to have doors open or um, you know to be in a position where they can make a fortune some people work very very hard um, and yet you know they're not making the money for themselves it, it's you know they're part of a, a bigger business not everything is that cut and dry only a self-made man I think can say that but I think it is true that we we sometimes do pretend that our failures are the fault of circumstances or something and I think I am actually quite guilty of that. I think that there are many times where I will grumble that, you know, something isn't right because of something else. And I think it's much harder to be the person who goes, well, that's my fault, really. Again, it's balance. You can't beat yourself up if things don't always go right. But um, when you walk into the craft, you're, the, the onus is on you and what you do with your life. And when you really let that sink in, that's actually quite a profound thing, because in religion, if if something goes wrong or you do something wrong, you go to church and you say, oh, please, God, forgive me, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you're not always taking responsibility in the way. I mean, people would argue you do. But when you're when you walk a, a pagan path, it's kind of your responsibility. It's a bit like being a passenger in the car and telling the driver how to drive the car and then you getting in it and you driving it yourself and you're responsible. So I, I get both sides of that and it is balance. And I think there is an interesting point here that she has got, she is submerged in water. So she has her emotions. She has them, you know, that they're, they're part of her, but she also um, is holding the world. So um, yeah, just, just my, my crazy notions. OK, let's move on. What you feel. The Emperor. Ooh. What I feel. Ooh. OK. Um, that's a meerkat, isn't it? <laughs> it looks like a meerkat. This is an interesting Emperor because, you know, he has a kind of dual personality thing, I feel, going on there. Um, the masculine side of... The Empress, obviously, is the Emperor who is the the manifestation, the, the, the male side. He is the strong protector of um, the material world, I suppose. This duality in him is interesting to me because I'm not quite sure how I, how I would look at this and interpret it. It's almost, to me, suggestive of the animal and the human sort of come together. You've got, he's got this odd ear thing going on. So he's kind of, um, he's kind of like, I, I don't like the word monster, cre creature come human, because we are both, um, you know, we have all these dark sides to us and we are in the twilight zone. So, ah, I don't know, what do I feel? I suppose I feel a bit of duality. I am 
um, would be perceived as a very strong female um, with a very uh, dominating personality, I suppose. But that could also be part of my um, masculine side. I, I wouldn't say I was overly, I'm not an overly masculine person, but I think m maybe I am in my personality. I'm not sure. It's a real mixed bag, that one. Fit how I feel about that. The emperor is perfectly balanced with everything in the proper little boxes. He can move smoothly through any environment, always keeping chaos at bay. Do I feel that I can do that? Um, I'm not sure how I feel. Ooh. Um, and last and um, is what you think. The star. Well, I'm I'm a believer in happy endings. I. I think that I spend most of my life in a fairy fae environment mentally. I'm off with the fairies. That is true of me. Um, I like happy endings to all my fairy tales. I've been described as Penelope Garcia from Criminal Minds. I'd love to be that beautiful, but I think it's more my way of being that probably. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, I suppose I, I I think that if you wish upon a star, it's, you know, heard. I, I believe in magic. I believe in, um, in that sort of soft uh, ethereal world, I suppose, which is probably why I love this deck so much. Um, it says about the star... The star shines over the land, a sign of hope. The star generously shares her power, sprinkling it in the ocean so that it may permeate all of life. Permeate. Permeate? Permeate? Permeate. What is wrong with me? I can't get my words out. Okay, so, I mean, you know... Again, you can go deeper with this because then I could really look at is this working for me or is it, you know, getting in my way? Um, but, you know, it's a very positive card in this deck. I mean, it's not a not positive card normally, but, you know, um, what is getting in my way? Am I too much in my fairy tale world when the world is, goes crazy? Um, I, I will disappear into my book where I am quite comfortable and the world goes on outside and I'm oblivious to it I, and I find when I mentally get um, quite stressed which is happening a little bit more and more at the moment um, I'm reverting to my book and I can just be lost um, I've always got a book with me I, if I have to go for an appointment I take a book because if there's, I'm very, I'm very much a punctual person. Sometimes other people aren't. That drives me insane. Um, so I take a book and I can think of it as I'm spending time in my book. I'm, I'm I don't care. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So overall, that is the the uh, spread, and you can make it as long or as as deep uh, as you want really um you can really kind of go work with this and challenge yourself a bit deeper if you're not going to do it very regularly so the, the the first card being who are you right now and where are you in your life your dreams you know who would you like to become or where would you like to go um and then you've got what you believe what you know what you feel and what you think not sure how i feel about this i've done this this spread a few times um and i get different cards every time and i think it's because of that sort of multifaceted side of us that we are complex beings and you never really uh you know these are trigger little parts of you that maybe you need to look at anyway this video has gone on long enough i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you will go off and have a go yourselves thank you so much if you stay to the end it's always appreciated um and uh yeah your comments are very welcome take care bye bye